Not too long ago, I did a review on this Magicycle and I told you what a great bike it is, how well it operates, how smoothly it shifts, and what a pleasure it is to ride, and how well built it is. But when you see me doing my camping videos, I'm always riding this Mach Wheel Tour Plus. Why is that? Well, I'm gonna tell you why, and then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna to do to this Magicycle to make it every bit as good, if not better, than this Tour Plus is. There's two reasons I always grab the Tour Plus. One is the increased height of those handlebars, which just make it so much more pleasant to ride because there's no downward pressure on your palms and your hands don't fall asleep. The other difference is the size of the rear rack. This is the Tour Plus and that's the Magicycle. The larger rear rack on the Tour Plus makes it easier for me to carry the load necessary to be able to camp overnight and haul sleeping bag and tent and something to sit on and all the goods. It's just, it's just better with this rear rack, this size. But I love this Magicycle bike. And I'm gonna make two changes on it that are gonna make it just as good as the Tour Plus is for comfort and for carrying capacity. Everything else considered, the size of the tires, the size of the frame, the comfort of the seat, they're all the same. They're equal. They both have the um, front suspension. They both have the 180 millimeter disc brakes. They both have the fenders, same lighting system, same size uh, hub motors, 750 watts each. The Magicycle has a little more get up and go when it comes to going up the hills. One thing I'm gonna change is the height of these handlebars. For $26, I was able to buy the same style of riser that the Mach Wheel has, and it's gonna put these handlebars up at the same height. The handlebars themselves are about the same, about the same configuration. So that ought to make it uh, a lot more comfortable when it comes to the um, handlebar height. I may need to buy another cable here. I've got one cable that looks like it's gonna be too short. It's the front brake cable, and I may need to replace that, but we'll see. So this is gonna be the first change I'm gonna make. There are many things you can do to modify a bike, and most of the parts on, on e-bikes are just available on the open market. Another thing is that all the components are pretty much um, plug and play. For example, if this, if anything goes out uh, electronically, it's just a matter of the, the plug is right in line. And you just unplug these things and, and plug in a new, uh, a new module. Okay, the old one's off. Let's see how the new one fits. Looks like it's going to go right on there. This has a rubber plug on the top that you pop out, and then you can get at the screw that holds this down in there. Get it lined up with the front wheel. One last check for alignment. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna see if I need to replace a brake cable or not. I don't know.
For sure the brake cable is too short. That's all right, Linda, come on. <laughs> I smelled coffee, so I was hoping there was coffee coming my way. Oh, I set it down right there, it'd be all right. Uh, just in the garage there or something. I do need to lengthen two cables. The front brake cable needs to be longer, and I need an extension for the display cable. But I'll go get those ordered, and let me show you the other improvement that I'm making on this bike. Well, because the rear rack is smaller, I'm going to go ahead and install a front rack on this one. This is uh, from Magicycle, runs about 70 bucks, and uh, it comes with the mounting screws, although the Magicycle also has the mounting screws already in there, but this is a real simple installation. These screws already have Loctite on them, so that'll they'll be uh, harder to vibrate loose. The screws are slotted, so it's just a matter of making sure it's basically uh, sitting down tight level, and then just even side to side, that's all. Then tighten the screws down. Well there, that's it. When you put the front rack on, you're going to need to move the headlight up off the front fender because if you don't, whenever you hit a bump, those shocks are going to compress and that headlight's going to come up and hit the bottom of the, of the rack. So when you buy the front rack from Magicycle, they provide a nut and bolt here and they provide a cable extension that's just the right length so you can move the headlight up to the front of the rack. So now you're going to see this Magicycle out on the trail with me. Well, as soon as I get that front brake cable um, lengthened and, and get the extension on that display cable. But that's only going to take a few days for that stuff to come in and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, the brake cable showed up, so let me show you how to install that. I'm just going to start out right down here at the uh, front caliper. I'm going to unscrew this and that's going to release this cable here and allow us to just draw the cable out. This is a number five Allen wrench. Using a good pair of wire cutters, you can just cut this cable off like that. And what you've done is cut off this end. Now that that's done, we can pull this out from the top. Now up here you can unscrew this. If this lock nut is down tight, just back it off and then it makes it so this cable is all loose now because I got it disconnected at the bottom. So unscrew this all the way out and then you'll see that it's got a opening down the side, both on the lock nut and this ferrule that screws into the brake here. You can just take this right off the cable like that. Once you've done that, just squeeze the brake and you can release the other end here and pull this right out. Now I can remove this whole thing from the wheel and from, from the frame and that's the old cable right there. For replacement, I ordered this Shimano standard brake cable set. And uh, there's enough in here to do two brake cables. Not just the stainless steel cable itself, but that uh, black 5 millimeter sheathing that goes on the outside. Inside the package are two stainless steel cables and one long length of the sheathing. Now, the sh these cables are two different lengths, and the shortest one is exactly the same size as the one I'm taking off. And I knew that when I ordered these. Um, but the price is about the same as ordering just one longer cable. Uh, I guess it's because Shimano sells so many. The, the cost was within a couple of dollars. So even though I got one cable that I can't use, I still ordered them because of the Shimano name when it comes to bicycle um, gears and brakes and things like that. I trust the name Shimano and that's why I ordered this. So yeah, one cable I can't use, but that's all right. I knew that to begin with. Still got the one cable here, but the first thing you need to do is run that plastic sheathing. I don't know what this is called, but um, I'm going to run this first and then run the cable down inside it. Also included are these ends 
There's the cable ends and the ferrules that go on uh, on the plastic sheathing here. This ferrule that goes on the end needs to be crimped a little bit. And I'm just using a standard wire crimper, crimper one of the, on the end here to do this. And I'm not going to squeeze it down very much, just a little bit to hold it on. Because it's going to be captive once it's in there anyway. Just like that, that's all I did. Just so it doesn't fall out while I'm assembling it. And I did it 90 degrees apart and it put little, four little dimples on here. That ought to work fine. That end just sits in there like that. This end, I just want to cut it come up and leave plenty of excess. And then cut it to the right length right here. It's not super critical. Within, a, within an inch or two will be fine. But I want to do a real nice 90 degree cut on the end here. Now for cutting this other end of the cable, you can't just take a pair of uh, wire cutters like this and cut it because this cable is actually has three layers. It has the inner core, which is like a, tef a, a slippery Teflon tube that the steel cable rides in. And then that's wrapped with a steel winding. And then there's the black plastic sheathing on the outside. If I just go to cut it with, this, with these wire cutters, it's going to crimp down that steel wrap and make it so the cable won't slide through. But I, I did some experimenting and I came up with a good way of doing this. And it's easy. After carefully measuring where you want it to be cut, I put a mark on it right here, cut it a little bit too long with the side cuts, open it up with an awl, take a piece of your old cable that's cut as neatly as you can get it and slide that in the end like that, past where you want your cut to be, Then when you cut it with the side cuts, or with the wire cutters here, it won't crimp the cable shut. It won't, it won't deform it. And you end up with a nice cut. Now the only thing I got to do is run the cable in from the other end and poke this end out. Okay, that worked out really well. Once again, slide the ferrule over the end. Crimp it lightly. Just enough to hold it in place. Then just run the cable through. There, I can see it coming out the other, other end down there. This end is easy to put back together. Feed that in like that. Make sure that the slots line up here. There we go. And that's it for up here. So I screwed this all the way in so I get the most adjustment I can when I need it. Now all I have to do is finish up down at the bottom. That should be easy. Down here I just fed this back through. Okay, this is, this is fully extended now, but I want to rotate this back and take some of the play out. So it's going to be tighter up at the handlebars. I won't have as much play up there. There we go. All I got to do now is cut this and cap it. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of extra here. Cut that off. Put one of these small cable ends on it. All this does is keeps the uh, wire from unraveling. I'm just going to use a pair of needle nose pliers on here and just give it a squeeze. Good enough. 
Well, the last part showed up and that's the cable extension. The shortest one I could find was an 11 inch, but that's okay. Just have the two ends that gotta go together. And this is a male and a female. It's splined so it only goes one way. Now just a couple of uh, uh, cable ties on here and that'll do it. Well, I do love this Magicycle though. It's got uh, the most pep of any of the bikes I have and the most power going up the hills. And also you can use the throttle to go from zero to full speed no matter what power assist level you're in. Like uh, most of the bikes, they'll go only, the throttle will only take you to the top level of that power assist level, like nine miles an hour and 13 miles an hour, uh, 16 miles an hour, whatever. That's all that the pedal is, that the throttle will do for you in that particular pedal assist level. On the Magicycle, it's not like that. No matter what pedal assist level you're in, it'll take you to the max speed of the bike. Oh, that is so nice. It was fine the way it was. The handlebars were down here about this level, but just I just like it up here. That's nice. Okay. Well, that was a very easy modification and it's done. Now the last thing is to take it out and test ride it. Woohoo! Yeah, maybe tomorrow.